because uh, from Barnes and Noble to the blogosphere, uh, there has been an explosion of apparent information about Islam. There has certainly been an explosion of words about Islam, uh, particularly since September 2001. And I needn't specify the date. But one thing which is very striking about all this explosion of, of publications and uh, bloviations is that uh, there's a remarkable lack of experience uh, at the basis of it. What we see is a, is a self-perpetuating repetition uh, of uh, a position, um, an approach, which uh, really is based principally on books, principally on, on uh, readings of history, which may or may not be accurate, but uh, are very kind of common. But the thing that, w whenever I read these, I, I was saying tonight at dinner, uh, when we were discussing comments that have already appeared beneath the, uh, the articles of, of Aloysius and Ibrahim on the Washington Post uh, on Faith blog, uh, just what a depressing place, perhaps the most depressing place in the world is the blogosphere, uh, where people hiding behind uh, pseudonyms feel free to, to dismiss uh, and more than dismiss, to, to uh, assassinate, shall we say, uh, anybody and everybody. The thing that, that makes it so depressing and the thing which uh, strikes me every time I, I venture into that uh, awful place uh, is just how, uh, how foreign it is to my own experience. Uh, it's foreign because it's what we call an essentializing discourse. It's a discourse which thinks it knows precisely what a Muslim is like and what Islam is and can uh, express itself in simple declarative sentences like Muslims cannot uh, Islam is incapable of dot, 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 fill in the blanks. Uh, the thing about this essentializing discourse, this thing that thinks once you've got the label that goes on the religion or on the person, you have entirely understood that person or that, that faith tradition, uh, the thing that makes it possible is, is precisely the, uh, the lack of the complicating factor of the real people, the real people, the real faces, uh, as Dr. Carlin said, uh, the names that go with the word Muslim, the, the faces, uh, the friendships. We don't stand, either of us, Muslim or Christian, on uh, the moral high ground, able to look down on the other and simply say, you have a problem. Although that's how much of our talk tends to go, whether it's in the, the Muslim blogosphere uh, or the Western blogosphere. We, we have to come down from those heights uh, and find each other together on the, low, on the moral low ground uh, where we begin to speak to one another of how we have failed. And then we can begin to speak to one another of our hopes. And then we can begin to speak to one another of the vision that we have. And so the question is posed to each one of us. Where will I stand? Where will I stand in this uh, relationship, this complex relationship between Muslim and Christian, between uh, East and West, if you want to call it that? Uh, where will I stand? It's a, it's a choice. It's not simply a case of I can go to Barnes and Noble and find out where they stand and where I stand. It is a choice for each one of us to decide where we will stand, where I will stand in relation to the other. Because each one of us now in, in our currently globalized world has the opportunity to stand next to, to stand in solidarity with, uh, to stand on the, the moral low ground with uh, Muslims and Christians. And when we have decided where we will stand together and how each of us will, will take our place in the construction of this new we, uh, 
we may be able to work out a vision for what kind of we we want that to be, what kind of world it could be if only we would admit uh, and be honest with one another about where we actually are.